Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're here. All right. And I'm in love with this good life. Can't give it up. Make it to the top. Keep climbing. I want to live it up. The good life. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. The good life. Good life. Oh, good life. Good life. Good life. Good life. Oh, hot changing from your basement. <laughs> I feel from so the on air, weird. from the on air studios. <laughs> it's our first show. What, what is our? Is he on air? What is our show? Is it three hundred seventy first show? And I think this it's is our first one together. First one together, <laughs> and it feels very, very weird. It actually, this does. is like I always watch. Like if you ever watch like Joe Buck and the guy, like yeah. so when they're in the, the booth and they do the two things. So yeah. here, you be an analyst and just start talking about uh, Dak Prescott. Okay. Whatever. Right, how about Dak Prescott? How he's doing? <laughs> you know, Joe Buck always does this. He goes, <laughs> I know, I know. Turns, I, it, it's, it's, like, it's, it's, aw- it's awkward. Like, look it is at the camera. <laughs> look at the camera. <laughs> look at the guy. Look at the camera. <laughs> when I'm in the booth doing the game, that's what you do. That's weird, right? I'll be like, okay, we're going to you know, start off. You're going to talk about these things. And like, you know, when you're not talking, like, you know, look at the guy, then look at the camera. They tell you to do that. But we're, this is the Mayor's Always podcast. So yeah. we'll do whatever. The hell we want. Yeah, exactly. Dude, you got to see the rest of the basement this weekend. You didn't know there was a whole there's a whole other bit part of the Bro, I just want to say Sarah and I have had a blast this weekend. We've yeah. had the best time, dude. Dang, you and Jess are the best hosts. <laughs> We've had so much fun too. And seeing the pool out there, we gotta come back. Yeah, oh yeah. We yeah. gotta come back when we get in that pool. I told Sean yesterday, like Nobody shows up in the winter. Sean's one of the only people that shows up in the winter. <laughs> Summertime, everybody's walking <laughs> in the back of the just in my yard. Everything it's great, it. though, dude. Yeah. We've yeah. had a blast. We've had so much fun. It started Saturday. P- Pete Corielli show. <sighs> this dude, bro, he's up there. He's, I didn't, I knew he was funny. And if you're listening, Pete, don't take this as a offense, take it as a compliment. He, has some jokes that are up there with any, like the dude. whole, the whole weekend we were like, this this entire set needs to be on Netflix. Yeah, or <laughs> if Corielli does a does a special on Netflix, it'll be it'll off the it'll charts. An hour and a half, we laugh. Hour That's tough to do for one yeah. hour and a half. He had us laugh, and his mannerisms are just incredible. Hysterical. He's so and funny. He's like athletic. Yeah. He moves around, yeah. and he was so kind to us. Him, yeah. and, his, him and his guys got to appreciate his yeah, brothers. Yeah, brothers. yeah. We, Matt, hung, we hung out for like shout out to Matt. What we yeah. hang out for like two hours. Yeah, after, after the show it was great. To see Pete. It was what was funny was he's basically in his hometown. He's from Long Island, so like. Yeah. Remember the one dude that comes back? He's like Danny G. <laughs> Danny, Danny G. G from like the block. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm Danny G. I'm the yeah. guy he talked about in the dude, show. Dude, what? What about what? I want. I never got your take on this, but what about the people that were sitting in front of us at the show? We were in the second row, oh. and there was there's there was some people sitting in the front row. I think a younger Sean Casey might have gotten a both an of altercation. I, I think <laughs> if anything, Jess and Sarah were about to. Oh, I had to attack. I had to hold Sarah back, and I, I know Jess. I can feel Jess and Sarah yeah. ready to pounce. I Brooklyn saw, and like, Jersey I girls. Saw, were yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. The Brooklyn and Jersey girls were coming out to the Brooklyn and Jersey girls in front of us. Oh my God, they were so loud and obnoxious. That was I, I saw one old school Sean Casey. At one point, Sean went like this. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" Now I said to my, I did say to myself, "I said, self." <laughs> I said, "I said, uh, you know, just lock in on Pete so that and don't let these people yeah, ruin exactly. it night because they they were overserved by like ten drinks and it was like yeah eight o'clock at night unbelievable the one the girls are like they're they're straight out of uh, New Jersey housewives yeah yeah, yeah yeah but they were like young and the one girl it was like pants four, unbuttoned it was like four four snookies yeah four snookies it was four two and two uh and two uh, uh What's the guy? Donnie, whatever. <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie. 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 Two Ronnies and four Snookies yeah, yeah. sat in front of us for an hour and a half. Didn't even talk about the show. And then Pete comes over he's, and calls one of them out. He's like, hey, man, you look like you have oh, guns. Yeah. He's like, I don't have guns. My brother does. The guy's yeah. serious. Like, his brother's like, I got, I got 10 tons. guns. Uh, what do you use them for, hunting? Hmm. No, to shoot people. I'm uh, like, okay, all right, check, please. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but we didn't let that ruin a night. That we, was awesome, though. One thing I do have to do is I I need to detox physically, not alcoholically, but yeah. food. Oh, we crushed. Dude, we crushed. We went to this one restaurant. <laughs> I have a picture of it. My my food comes, and I Jess was like, are you sure you want to order that? 
And I was like, yeah. And she's like, you know what it looks like? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. What is it? It actually looks like a pile of throw up. What was it? It was a squid? It does. It looks... It came, and I, I could see... Dude, it was like, so good, though. Oh, yeah. Because I started eating it. Rich stopped eating his. I was starving. Like, hey, let me get a couple bites of that. Is it a seafood <clears throat> squid ink risotto? And then here, this is the funniest thing. Jess just texted me, and she goes, <coughs> you have to tell this story if you tell anything. So yesterday morning, we went to this place, CJ's Coffee Shop, oh, yeah. which is Man. great eggs, right? It was like a, great kind place. of like a greasy spoon little town <clears throat> place. It was great. <laughs> Waitress comes up, and Sean says... I want four eggs over over medium over medium bacon. Oh, dude, you got a oh, what is that? A uh, uh, pastrami, pastrami, bacon, pastrami. whatever. And she goes, "What do you want your eggs on?" <laughs> and Sean says, "A plate." <laughs> Dead serious. She goes, "What do you want your eggs on?" I go, "A plate." <laughs> I think she was trying to say, like, do you want them on on, on a roll? A roll. Oh, yeah, because you guys got the sandwich. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was. Yeah, I got that. Just, good, though. Just has been laughing. Just laughed about that all night. <laughs> Wait. Anyway, so it was so great having you guys. It's unbelievable. It's been a great trip, dude. It's been a great trip. Thank you. you guys have been great hosts. We can't wait to host you guys in Pittsburgh, and we'll, we'll yeah. return the favor. Awesome. <clears throat> we did a, uh, it's a, we live in like a hobbit house, so like Sean's really tall. Like we're, we're always like, Sean, duck, look, look out, watch out for that, don't, don't trip over that. But anyway, I went, I took my cold shower this morning, and 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 you're, I must admit, the the Long Island pipes maybe a little colder. My head was like, no, dude, oh, I know, like 10 seconds. That's what I do every morning. Oh That's why gosh. you got the cold plunger. That's yeah. my shower. Get you going, yeah, in the last 30 seconds, oh, kills yeah. me. Um. So last night we were, we were watching some foosball. Well, first of all, you did your break breakthrough pro thing, which was awesome. Oh, yeah, like, breakthrough pro. Yeah. This guy is so intense down here. We're being just up in the living room, and he's shooting <laughs> through the pipes, giving motivational speech, and being just ready. Like we're like, we got to motivate ourselves to do something better with our lives. Listen to the whole thing; it's great. It's better with our lives. <laughs> yeah, the breakthrough pro, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough pro, breakthrough pro. Why can't I get that out? Breakthrough pro session two last night here. JD was JD was out there in Pittsburgh and it was great, man. It was a great, great thing. So thanks. Yeah. Sorry about yesterday. I was you know, I do a lot of prep work Dude, on Sunday. A lot of prep work <laughs> on Sunday stuff. So. <laughs> like no, in a good way. Show. No, but yeah, it was like pre it was like, pre, it was like pre World Series. <laughs> I could see the look in your eye. You said it at one point, you go, I get kind of locked in for this. I yeah. was like, I know yeah, it's like game day. away from me like a starting pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so last night we're watching the football games. Dallas <laughs> gets destroyed by Green Bay. First of all, props to Green Bay, the quarterback, dude. Jordan Love, dude, what a ball he throws, bullets, dude. dude, bullets, spirals like unbelievable Best spirals. Yeah, yeah. Seen. But so uh, after it was pretty cool for the thirty thirteen. We got we had a uh, Max Crosby. Oh yeah, that's dude. right. Last dude. night you were working. Yeah, I went yeah. to bed. <laughs> Chichi, <laughs> doing Max Crosby well, down there. In morning. Raiders. He was really super, was a good guy. Super cool guy. He's great. <laughs> He's got a little podcast too that he just started. That's gonna blow up. Like I mean, recovery and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's such a cool. He's a very down to earth, great guy. Super nice. Funny enough, Chase Daniels on uh, doing the thing with us. And he's like, I said, I didn't know if I wanted to do one of these, but then I heard Chase was on. He's like, so I had to join. He turns his camera, and on his wall, Max Crosby's first ever sack in the NFL was Chase Daniel. So we're doing an interview with Chase, and he pulls what? Turns no his camera, and it's Max Crosby, like, just dropping <laughs> him. And Chase him like, bro. He's like, I remember that play, man. It was it's pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah. cool. But here, this is a, we'll So it was, it was Chase Daniels and Trey Wingo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. They call it Chase. What was their take on the game? Oh, like they like it's it's over. Like Jerry Jones is gonna is gonna he's gonna clean house, man. And they they think maybe Belichick. Wow, were they saying that? They were saying that, but the, and now the whole NFL world is saying like Belichick to the Cowboys. What? Yes, dude, they were not supposed to lose that game. And then Dak came out late, late last night. See, I was up late. <laughs> I was working here. <laughs> Dak came out late last night. He goes, "Well, if you fire McCarthy, you might as well fire me." Like he kind of like. Because Dak, you know, he's a quarterback. He's still got to play well. They lost like 40. To, uh, I mean, that, the score was 48 32. Yeah, but it was like 48 to 16. And those, they were just oh, garbage. They were garbage. Garbage. Oh, garbage points. It sounds, it looks so. What is it about the Cowboys, dude? They like. No, man. They're like the. They're like the Bears. I'm sorry. I think Mike McCarthy's a great coach. 
He wins. He's a winner. He was. He's won everywhere. And dude, I, I'm just saying. I know they didn't win. It's tough to win. It's tough to win, dude. It's league. tough to win in pro sports. Yeah. You yeah. get to the. I I got to the World Series in 2006. In 1999, when I was with the Reds, we won 96 games. We went to that one game playoff. We kind of blew the. We had the uh, in the Milwaukee in the last three games. We had to win two out of three. We lost two out of three. Oh had to go to that one game playoff against the Mets. Lighter, uh -huh. right there, Al. Um, dominated. Better. Dominate us. But I remember thinking it was my second year in the business. I was like, hey, we'll be back here every year. Right. It's incredible. I didn't get back. I didn't I got to the postseason. Thank thank you, God, for 06. I got to the World Series with the with the Tigers from a trade from Pittsburgh. That's the only reason I got there. Yeah. Then I went with Boston in 2008. One thing I realized when my career was over, wow. Is it tough to get there? Uh -huh. To get there, and then to win is so much harder. So, like, thing. we were fortunate. We beat the Yankees first round. We swept the A's, got to the World Series, lost the Cardinals. Then when I was with the with the um, with the um, Red Sox, we beat the Angels. Like, I think we walked them off in like five games. Like, it wasn't even a division series. Lost in seven games to the to the Rays to get to the World Series. Nice. But you know, I look at these guys like like the Cowboys and everyone's pissed off. I get it, but once you get to the postseason. You're now playing with battle-tested teams, good quarterbacks right. like Jordan Love, other good coaching. Right. Uh, guys have to be healthy. Right, right. Yeah, you know I mean, so there's so many such variables with postseason yeah. uh, playoff. You know, Love, that's a great it, example. It's not like, easy. If you played Green Bay in Week Three, you're not. That's not the Jordan Love that was that was on the field yesterday. Oh, dude, yeah, this guy's like experience. Everybody's now. a year later, right? Yeah, and and you're gelled. And if you get to the playoffs, you've done something right now. Yeah. So this is interesting. This is a baseball thing to me. So I'm looking last night for some notes for the football stuff. And I Do we love a rookie. Sorry, no, he's not a rookie, but it's his first year starting. Started. Okay, because yeah, Rare Rogers. Right. Right. Okay, okay. What's Rogers thinking right now? He blows out his leg in the first game, and then he's watching Jordan Love take the Packers yeah, to the Super Bowl. Exactly. Wow. They have a good shot too because. <clears throat> Now everybody's kind of banged up. Dude, yeah. Who's left? Yeah. And, although the freaking Lions. Dude, dude, dude. The Lions. Come on. You got to. Okay, really quick. <laughs> First off, I love Dan Campbell. If you don't love so Dan, cool. if you don't love the head coach of the Alliance, time to get out. <laughs> also love John Kanka. Right. One of my right. favorite people in the world out there in Detroit. Johnny, if you're listening, I know you're fired up. He was a. It was funny for John. He was a Browns fan for a while, then he moved back to Detroit from Detroit. So really a, a, a Lions fan at heart. So I know he's fired up with Colleen out there in Detroit. They're fired up. Um, so that that's cool. But I want to tell you just a real quick story. Yeah. When I was with the Tigers, we in the 2006 World Series, um, we were we went to take like uh, – it was freezing, dude. I want to tell you, it was like snowing game one. It was snowing in Detroit. So we had that, we had like that seven days off, that weird, you know, thing before the World Series. So we needed time to like go to, we, we had practice one day and we, the, the, the um, Ford Field, I think we went and took grounders or at their facility, right? We went and took grounders and maybe some outfield work. That's what we're doing. We're doing outfield work and stuff like that with the Lions. So we, 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 we over crossed with the Lions. So, the punter was <clears throat> punting, and they're like, hey, Case, they're like, Sean, do you want to catch some punts? Oh, right. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go in there, dude. First off, the NFL footballs are so big. They're, 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 they're hard. hard. They're hard. Dude, Except they're for hard. Tom Brady's deflate gate balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's easier. Yeah. But, dude, these things are – so, dude, he, he goes, all right, you want to catch them? I was like, yeah, I'm ready. He boots this ball, Chinch. You want to talk about a torpedo. <laughs> Anything – the way he hits it. The revolutions, the spin rate, what's been on the chart? <laughs> it's coming down, dude. Yeah. It doesn't come down like you like somebody throws you a pass. It comes like this. This thing is coming down straight <laughs> like this, and it's like it's it's coming down like a torpedo. And I'm like, I don't know if I can catch this. So, dude, I go to catch it. I don't catch it. It hits my hands and it falls. It actually hurt my hands. Yeah. And then it kicks another one. I catch it. You know, I, I do catch it, but now you know, get used to it. But that he made a point. He goes, no, think about this. Think about catching this ball with 11 people coming to no. kill you. <laughs> no. So, dude, it was hard enough to try and catch it, let yeah. alone people coming. Yeah, you got somebody running. The greatest athlete in the world. 240 yeah. at 250 pounds. Coming to knock your head off. Neck. And his whole job is to knock your head off. We were talking about that last night. <clears throat> somebody made a tackle. By the way, Macy's going nuts upstairs. She's happy. Macy's yeah. been good to them, though. Yeah, so let her bust. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, 
we were talking about like <clears throat> when you were younger, you could like you bounce right back up from getting knocked down or something like that. And oh, yeah. now we watched somebody like get tackled last night, and I was like, if that happened to me <laughs> now, I would be in traction in a hospital bed for like six straight days. Oh my god, that's what I said. I go, Chip, stand up. <laughs> Let me just bump you real quick onto the That'd ground, and we'd be at the uh, ICU. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but anyway, so with the little baseball spin on the football thing, it's showing longest tenured current coaches from every sport. I forgot who the hockey guy is, as I often do. Uh, Popovich for uh, okay, the Pop's, NBA. yeah, Pop's yeah. still there. Yeah, um, I forget who now replaces Belichick. But then, do you know who the longest tenured manager in baseball is at the moment? Current. Longest length. Uh, All right, hang on, hang on. Let me think about this. It's like, I was like, huh. David Bell? No. Nope. No. Kevin Cash? Boom. Kevin Cash. Nine years. He's the longest in baseball Boom. right now. Which And it's funny because I saw that. And yesterday we were talking just when we were driving somewhere. And you were just talking about how great of a manager Cash is. Yeah. And like I saw that and I was like, wow, he's, he's been there that long. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah well, you know what? I think with with Council signing to get eight, Craig Council got eight million dollars to go to the Cubs. People are starting now realizing, oh yeah, you can. I think we thought we'd just bring in anybody to manage. Mm. Hey, the front office yeah. is managing anyhow. They'll just send down the lineup and put it in there and everything. Stop that. You have a hundred and sixty-two games that you're with these guys right. with a thirty-game. Season at spring training, a little, you know, a little side season, right? You know, right. it doesn't count. You're like, don't want to give up your hits there. You're like, why am I three for four in spring training? But those games count. You play them. Right. And, and you and you got three weeks before and you're getting ready for the season and all that stuff. So, you know, for anyone out there that thinks that the front office is just going to put a lineup in and, the, and that guy in the dugout is going to just put it out there and be a puppet, that is the furthest thing from the truth. You have to be a leader in that clubhouse. You have to bring a – energy a vibe that those guys want to follow leaders lead from the front yeah. right and now it's, that's why you're starting to see council get the money you know when i was with booney in new york i see man what a leader he is he really is i know fans go back and forth but that's just being in new york that's it's gonna happen kevin cash dude kevin cash is in is in a market that they should not be winning never right they should not be winning i don't care how good their players are they should not be winning at times Obviously, they do have good players. They do a great job of scouting. They do a great job of developing, trading. They have a, they have a whole system, the raise system of how yeah. they get rid of guys right at the perfect time mm -hmm. and get back a ton of value. But Kevin Cash, dude, I played with Cash in 08. I knew he was going to be a great manager, great leader, uh, uh, a communicator. He's like a Leland type, obviously, like a Terry Francona. You know, he gets along with everybody, but, but it makes you feel like you're so special. You could be the... You could be the last bullpen guy or the utility guy off the bench. He makes it feel like <clears throat> we can't do it without you. Right. <clears throat> you know, so I look at that and I say, uh, I'm excited for cash because I believe he's been undervalued. Mm. You know, as far as like the pay goes, right. you know, you're right. with the race for a few years, not going to get paid that well because that's just the way that market is. Kevin Cash, Cashy, I hope when it's time that you cash in. You're right. You go get the nice. cash. You go get the cash because you didn't make a ton of money as a player, and you're the best manager in the game. And you should be. You should be out there making some big money. I keep. I just looked in the screen. And I was like, "Holy cow! It's so weird seeing Sean." I'm usually looking at you. <laughs> no, and I'm here. And you're here. I was thinking the same thing. It was, it was like, weird. As you're talking to me right now, I'm like, I'm usually like, I like, I know how to look at the camera. You know, you're right in front of me, two feet away, and I'm like, God, this is so weird. So weird. Meanwhile, we just spent three days together. I don't know if we. Oh, I, I gotta get better at this. Oh job. my god! This. this is so cool. It is cool. We gotta do this more. Yeah, we gotta do this. Maybe more. we'll do like Reds Fest next year. Yeah, just thinking maybe we'll. Yeah, do I gotta call. I gotta call the people at Reds Fest. See if Chinch and I can take the stage. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Jim Day's got a great podcast. Which I like. That's what gave me the idea. Was Jim Day's got a podcast? So they did Jim Day's podcast on the oh, stage. That's cool. So I'm thinking maybe we do a side the mayor's office. Yeah, we'll you and me. Page. Bring sell, some of the guys up. Sell some t-shirts. Yeah. Maybe get a couple of bucks for the time. <laughs> oh, wait. You got to tell them before we go. You, you, what you did to Pete. You know, that was crazy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I sent, I sent Pete two boxes. Remember, I don't know, he listened to our show. 
last week Pete was talking about getting his address and I didn't send him anything. Well, I really was sending him a Christmas card. <laughs> right. But he, he called you out on the Pete and Sebastian show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. He called out on the Pete and Sebastian show and Sebastian was like, there's nothing worse than when people get your address and send you a Christmas card. I'm like, right. oh, shit, that's what I was doing. <laughs> So Sarah had the genius idea. She took a little box, put the card in it, and I put a little note in there. Put it into this <clears throat> big box that my buddy Travis Grubb had sent. That was with the, all the peanuts in it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you wear oh, all the worst. peanuts everywhere. You don't know where to uh, throw them away. Yeah. Put them in your recycling, <laughs> whatever. Burn them. Yeah. So, so big Home Depot box with another small box with all the things in it, and it just had a card in the middle. But I did send him. <laughs> I did send him a bat. You too, did send so, him a bat. Yeah, yeah. Too. We gave him a jersey. Gave him a jersey. Yeah, yeah, show. Yeah. That, that was really that fun, was great, man. Yeah, that was what great. a great night. Great night. Dude. Other than the Goombas in the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's such yeah, a great yeah, night. That was great, dude. Oh. Well, the one dude next to Sarah was leaning up like he was going to say something. Oh, right. Three or yeah. four people were going to say something. But oh, wait. There's thank one. God they did. There's one last thing I got to show, <laughs> Sean. In his prep for his uh, for his event last night, seemingly needed to uh, to satiate and, and fill his fill himself. Well, there's yeah, there's, there's so there's so much Italian yeah oh and around here. So yeah. then next thing you know, I come upstairs, I come back from a walk. Bone and veal chop. Okay, you see that? Look how big that thing is, right? Now here's the next picture. Gone. <laughs> Gone, dude. Dude, it was so I, good. That was an it was so good. I thought I, I was gonna have a little piece, piece of it. No, you crushed it. I couldn't stop, time. dude. I couldn't stop. It was incredible. It was great. I, I, they pound that veal, get it. Like, Viaggio's, you know? man. Viaggio's Ooh. Italian chop house. They call yeah. it. You can't go bad out here, Long Island. You're getting you're getting a diner. If you're getting a diner experience, yeah. and you're getting some Italian. You yeah. know you're gonna snow. You exactly right. Grubbed. I gotta cleanse this week, man. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up this morning. I was like. Oh, this is more swollen, weight. swollen, yeah, yeah. swollen. I barely could get my ring on this. <laughs> anyway, all right. So you go, you go on. You're sticking. Yeah, well, um, I'm going. To, I'm, dude. I got a lot going on this week. I'm going to the network today. Mm -hmm. I'm working tonight on MLB Network from five to six. Then tomorrow, I'm working doing a top ten first baseman. Oh, There's a little okay. stress in that. That's yeah, a little stressful. stress putting that together. So I'm doing top ten first baseman. Then I'm flying out after the show to Oklahoma. Going right. back to Stillwater, Oklahoma, which I was just there three weeks, ago, <laughs> hitting with Matt Holiday and his kids, and we're doing a piece on the Holiday Boys. That's cool. So I'm going there tomorrow night, Wednesday. I'm doing the Wednesday morning. I'm doing the piece, flying right back Wednesday night, and then uh, and then I'm coming um, on Friday. I'm doing a little keynote speech with my buddy Josh Lambert for Lamb Financial. Nice. And then we're doing that. We have a 15th anniversary show from two to three on Friday, and then I'm flying back to Pittsburgh. So Jeez. action today, baby. That's right. Action Sean and Sarah week. rolled in. They got like nine suitcases. <laughs> you have a suitcase for your? Do you have an actual suitcase for your health supplements? <laughs> yeah. Is that a fact? <laughs> Jeff was like, it's that just? Is that just the health stuff in there? Yeah, Sarah's good. She kept like we got a blender. And, you know, <laughs> I'm like, right, we have like eight bags. I'm like, what are we? What are we doing here? She's like, I was like, don't even say anything. You know what they do? Like, like yes. just like, yeah. She's letting me do my thing. So no. Sarah packed like 17 bags for the six day trip, and I just that looks good. Yeah, you actually got in trouble that yesterday. You weren't even down there because mm -hmm. Sarah was trying to get something out of one of the bags, and she's like, Sean. She's talking to you in her head because you would move you. Her suitcase is packed. I mean, honestly, like a professional. I <laughs> do. It is. I, I mean, Actually. I don't even know. Yeah, she should build towns because she would be able to fit more homes and roads into the town because the thing was so perfect. Oh, right. And she came down. She oh, she unzipped it, opened it, and she goes, "Sean," <laughs> and I was like, "Everything all right?" And she's like. I had this all set up. And she's like, there's this. And then she goes, oh, you know, the very first night you were looking for a pair of jeans. She goes, oh, and look, here's the jeans he couldn't find the other day. I was like, oh, he's in big trouble. Oh, I think he was showering at the time. Dude, I always say, Sarah's always updating things, you know, like, uh, yeah. you know and, and uh, she is because she's got that Girl Scout. She used to be a Girl Scout. Got okay. that Girl Scout blood, dude. Like, oh, yeah. you're a Girl Scout. You end up, I guess you end up walking in and just, <laughs> you could tie 18 different knots. You could just like, Everything's so organized. So at least I know whenever we go someplace or in the house, things oh, are organized. Gonna be, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be organized. I do that too. Just, mm. I, 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 just as we go on vacation, I really don't. She's like, figure out your clothes. And like, I'm like, okay. And then the next day, figure out your clothes. Like, <laughs> okay. And then I'll like go to work or something. I'll come back and she'll just be standing there with a fully loaded suitcase, totally done. <laughs> figure and out. I'm like, and I want to be, no, done. Like, she, she figured out the clothes. She's sticking me yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so we would get to the, uh, we get to like wherever we go, and yeah. I'll be like, hey, Justin, and she's like, yes, I brought it. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, well, what about my uh, those blue socks? Socks are in the drawer. It's exactly what I brought. I'm like, all right, I got to show it, up. And just it, it is great, though, when, when when your girl knows exactly what, like, they're paying attention to what you like. Yeah. Like, sometimes Sarah will pack the bag of all the T-shirts I wear. Yeah. Oh, man, you got all my, yeah. you got the nine yeah. t-shirts yeah. I locked in on. Yeah. Oh, I was hoping you would bring this shirt for the, yeah. she's like, yeah, I know, for the dinner on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh my God, no. It's she's crazy. like, here's two outfits that I <laughs> thought you would like. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, this is it. I'm so Chichi, happy. Thank, brother, us. brother, I love you, man. I just want to say thank you for having us. Now. Uh, we had so an much absolute fun. blast. It's great to be here in the on-air Chin Studios <laughs> that I've seen for 371 <laughs> episodes. This is 372, I think. Yeah. And uh, incredible, man. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And we'll see you at some point in Pittsburgh. Yeah. We'll see everybody tomorrow morning. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we, we also got to figure out. We'll probably have to figure out Wednesday. We'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. We'll figure, we'll figure, we'll figure that out like we always do. Look at this. Hope everyone has a, had a great weekend. And I hope everyone has an incredible day today. We'll see you tomorrow. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did it.